Welcome to the Registers Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County. This show is about Plymouth County real estate. Our headline for the month is Spring Sales on the Rise, a Return to Normalcy. This show is being taped in May, but we're reporting on the April activity at the Registry of Deeds. So let's get right to the numbers. Our first image you're going to see is of sales of property. There are 850 sales recorded in April, more than the 805 in March, 30% more than the 652 last April. And year to date, in recording of sales of property deeds, we're up 13%. Uh, the next image you're going to see is of sales for the month of January through April. Every one of our communities, Abington to Whitman, 27 in all, have had sales of property. Plymouth in Brockton are certainly the largest communities and the larger number of sales, but everyone's had real estate activity and it's been very strong. Uh, the biggest jump we've seen over the past year has been in mortgages. Uh, because of the low rates, many people are using mortgages to purchase homes, but also to refinance their current mortgages at lower rates or for shorter time periods. There are 3,380 mortgages recorded in April, um, less than the 4,180 4, in March, up 22% compared to the 2,719 last April in year-to-date, calendar year-to-date, we're up 61% in the recording of mortgages. Uh, we've followed foreclosure issues since the meltdown in 2008. Um, unfortunately, I believe that once the moratoriums are over, we may see a higher number of foreclosures coming in, uh, but currently they're very, very low. Um, there are only six foreclosure deeds in April, slightly more than the five in March, 67% less than the 28 last April, and they were 76% down year to date. Um, the other foreclosure document we receive, uh, foreclosure notices, is really the first thing we see recorded at the Registry of Deeds that shows someone's in trouble. It's the path to foreclosure, but even those are way down. There are only 14 foreclosure notices in April, less than the 18 in March, but 600% less than last April, and 73% year to date. If anyone is facing difficulty paying their mortgage, I urge you not to wait, but to reach out to a federal housing counselor immediately to try to see what you can do to save your home. Um, the foreclosure listing by communities, again, is very, very small. Normally, these charts don't show as many zeros. Um, again, from Abington to Whitman, you see a listing of foreclosure deeds and orders of notice. And again, those numbers are very low, but I will expect to see them going up in the future. Um, I always like to highlight there is a free property fraud alert sign up on our website. You put your email in and everything that gets recorded against your property, you'll get an email. Um, I had someone last week call me who's been a victim of identity theft and he wanted to know what he could do to protect his real estate. Clearly our staff uh, tries not to put anything on against your property um, that is unauthorized, but it's also a good thing to have this free property fraud alert in the case something does go on. We continue to e-record our documents, 80% uh, in recorded land and over 50% for land court. Our training room is currently closed uh, because of COVID. It'll be opening hopefully in the fall. And I also want to mention, if you get a, something in the mail that tells you, we'll get you a copy of your deed for $40, it's a scam. Uh, go to one of our offices 
and you can get your copy of your deed for a dollar a page. I have a great guest coming on in the next segment, Eileen Kane with the Kane uh, Group and William Ravis Real Estate discussing the current real estate market. She's been a guest before. I'm sure she'll do a great job. Welcome back to the Registers Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County. In this show, we always do something educational in this segment. We've had surveyors, appraisers, commercial lenders, many people involved in the real estate business, but it always comes back to the realtors. The realtors are the people that keep real estate moving. I have a great realtor today, Eileen Kane of the Kane Group, William Ravis Real Estate. Welcome back. Thank you. Thanks again for having me. Eileen, you've been a guest about three times at least mm -hmm. over the years and always appreciate the ability you have to uh, explain what's going on and I never have to uh, <laughs> struggle to get, <laughs> to get an answer. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Well, certainly a different time. So let's talk a little bit of how you got into the real estate mm -hmm. business. First of all. Yep, so it's been 17 years. Um, I graduated in Northeastern with a business degree, did some legal recruiting, and then um, my ex father in law actually was a real estate agent in town, brought Paul Clancy, and he thought I'd be good at it. So right. here we are, you know, 17 years of, later. <laughs> a little bit about your company. I said the Kane Group, William Ravis um, Real Estate, and you're based in Canton now. Yeah, yeah, I'm in Canton. We have 42 offices, so really right. my base is the um, car, you know, but right. um, we do have multiple offices that we're able to pop in on. William Ravis is a family-owned business that was founded by Bill Ravis, and um, we have a mortgage division, insurance division, and real estate division. 42 years um, going with uh, nine states and 4,000 agents. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, yeah, it's great. So it's been a very funny year, mm. certainly from March forward, although it's been a pretty hot year for real estate. Yes. How's your experience been? Um, that's exactly that. You know, at a time where it is so, um, uh, we're a health crisis, you know, with the pandemic, um, the real estate has been extremely robust, the, more robust than I've ever seen in all the years of doing real estate. And it's because the interest rates are so low, historically low, um, it's cheaper to buy a home than to rent a home. The demand is extremely high, and affordability is, is high. Um, so it has been a robust, uh, a great market, really, for, for all buyers and sellers. I will say that it's the first time in all my years at the registry, which is a long time, mm. that the average sale price hit half a million dollars. That's the average sale price, including Plymouth County is made up of so many different towns, as you know, it's, that was shocking to me. Yeah. Buyers want to be in a home. Um, and I think my, now more than ever with the pandemic, it's anyone that was on the fence is off, you know, mm -hmm. and really want to move forward in their, their next chapters. Um, the inventory is low. People are able to stay in their houses longer. The pandemic stop people from being able to go out or even list their property. Mm -hmm. um, so again, it's historically our spring market that we typically have, we just aren't seeing that jump in inventory that we usually do. And it's a lot to do with the pandemic. And again, people can stay in their homes until their 90s. Healthcare can come to you. So let's uh, take both sides of it. I, I know I'm sure you represent buyers and sellers. I do. So let's start with a seller. Mm -hmm. If someone decides they want to sell their home, mm -hmm. um, what are the first kind of steps you take? We'll go over and look at the property and to see you know, the product of what they have for sale. Still advise them, even though it's considered a seller's market, um, you still want to get the most bang for their buck and they deserve to get top dollar. So there's you know, a lot of advisement on what to do to promote the home, get it ready for sale. Um, and then, you know, again, talk about what we're going to do to market the home properly and make them aware of what's going to come ahead. It's going to be probably a multiple offer situation. Um, make the decision with logic, not emotion, um, for the sell side. Very different for the buy side. And um, 
Yeah, and then just let, let them know what we're going to do to bring them to close. So why do you think there's so much hesitancy for sellers to list their property right now? Again, the pandemic is one that's really caused a halt. Um, but without that, you're still going to see hesitation. If the pandemic didn't happen, there's still hesitation. Um, where did you go? If I had a dime for every time I got a phone call saying, my neighbor sold for 500. I bought this for 240. You sold it to me. I want to sell. And I say, great. Where are we off to? I don't know. I'm like, that's a great point. Well, then if you don't have a place to go, um, and you're not looking to move to Tennessee or downsize, you're going to be paying high rent. So stay. You know, the market goes like this. Mm -hmm. Just if you love where you live, then they're going to stay. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening. Where do they go? Before the pandemic, they were rushing to the city. Now that the pandemic hit, they're rushing out of the city. They want more space. Where do you go? So back, staying on the cellar, have you seen many new homes being built in this area? Oh, if there's a piece of grass, there's yeah. a home right. going on it. Even in a town like the Bridgewaters, where it was a minimum acre, they're down to a quarter acre lots now. Mm -hmm. You know, they're getting the the zoning to do so, and they can't build them fast enough. Yeah, my um, concern is they're building so many apartments and people are missing out on the benefits of home ownership. Yeah, but again, we need the apartments because right. you know, there's, there's a lack of, of homes, whether you're buying or renting, there's a huge lack either way. So if you had a a buyer walk into your office to call you on the phone. Mm -hmm. What would your advice to them be? I know it's been a very frustrating mm -hmm. market for buyers. Yeah, yep, it really has been. Um, I am on the buy side. I'd say I'm 50-50, mm -hmm. you know, 50% uh, um, listing and 50% on the buy side. Um, I would tell them that it could be a bit. I would tell them, you know, keep swinging even if you miss. Um, don't buy something that you really don't love. Even though the inventory is still so low, once everything settles, you got to love where you live. Mm. Um, so take your time. Don't settle. Um, especially the buyers, you know, you can, you can create the home within, but you can't change your zip code. You can't change your address. So once you pick that street and that address and that home, you're going to be there. So take your time, even though it's frustrating and, and could, take, could take a year. It could take 10 offers. Or not. But I still believe you'll land where you're supposed to land and you'll be where you're meant to be. That's my honest thought. So what percent of your buyers are coming in with a pre-approval letter? All of them. Okay. They don't get in the car without a pre-approval because if they love something and then their lender tells them they can't afford it or they've got some credit corrections to do, you know, it's not about my time. It's about their time and their heart only to learn that they can't do it. So I need to make sure that everything, you know, the lender received everything. They have a full description of what, you know, every, you know, all of it. I need the plan mapped out for them so they can actually make an offer on a home. It's best for them, really, mm -hmm. that they take those steps. And what has your experience been with people coming in with prior homeowner education courses, or do you recommend them? I do, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we don't see that program being used as much, okay. the first home buyer program being used as much. Um, I'm just, the home education program? Not training? as much, not okay. as much as we were. Okay. I think the demand is so high for, but they're just going in. Okay. You know, sure. yeah. And are there waivers of home inspections and things like that? As there, well? there are. Yeah. There are. So again, it's not something I recommend. I advise them the good and the bad in that. Um, I purchased a home myself in August, and I waived a home inspection because it was so competitive. But I've been in thousands of homes, and I know what to look for, and I just look for the guts. Mm -hmm. The guts were good. As a longtime homeowner, he cl clearly cared for the home, and that was enough for me. Um, but, you know, when we go look for houses now, there are instances where I say, you look at the pretty kitchen, I'm going to look at the roof, See if there's soffit vents, ridge vent, water, any signs of water. I'm going to look at the plumbing and I'm going to run the dishwasher because you may waive a home inspection. 
So I go in looking for the non-pretty, and they go in, you know, looking for how they can live in the home. Um, you know, again, a lot of the listing agents, they're welcome. They, they do welcome a home inspection, and they understand because they're on the buy side as well. Um, I, I think it's important to still educate yourself on the property, especially if it's one that said multiple turnovers. You can look at the past sales and say, there's been a lot of different people in this house. We should probably inspect. So we know there's been an unexpected upturn from the beginning of the pandemic until now mm -hmm. through May 1st. How do you see us going from here, almost in the middle of May, through uh, the end of the calendar year? Can you define upturn to, to me? Well, clearly our sales were up mm -hmm. over that time period. So prices, you mean? Prices were up and our sales were up. Yep, yep. So it's going to continue. There'll be no slowdown. Um, you know, again, it's going to be a great time to go on the market all through the end because with the interest rates still under 3%, um, there's every reason to buy to buy and sell right now. So they'll, there's, we're steady as we go. Will we see increases? <laughs> I mean, I think our last show I said to you, we should be peaked when you look at the last seven years. But we didn't. <laughs> it kept going. So... Um, It'll be steady as you go. Whether or not there'll be more of an increase, it'll depend on the inventory. So let's talk a little bit about the technology that has changed in the real estate business, how many people are going in with the understanding that they've looked at multiple properties on websites and yeah. really done a, done a pretty good job at identifying what's out there. Yeah, yeah. That's helped. I mean, I've done a couple of sight unseen sales this year with people relocating. I've done some FaceTime. I sold a property in Framingham for $1.1 million, and it was a FaceTime of the couple um, that was in Texas relocating to be closer to grandparents. And we just hit every corner of the property, and they made an offer. And it was they never actually stepped in until after the closing. That's amazing. Um, so the technology has helped people to process of elimination, get history of a home, it certainly has helped the, the, you know, the consumer and the agents as well. So what do pre people primarily look for when they come to you uh, in, a, in a location and or a home? What are their priorities? Location. Um, the priorities as far as, well, as far as what they if you're asking what they're looking for in an agent, they really want um, guidance. You know, they want to know what you know. But somebody from out of state in terms of the in area. Area. Do they have a particular area in mind? Yeah, so they already know because again, school system ratings are online. Right. Everything is available to them. So when people come, I'm rarely seeing somebody come to me and say, where should I live? They know where they want to live. They've already identified that. It's just a matter of the home. Can we find this home in this zip code is what I call it. Nowadays, people are buying that. They're buying the location. So could you share your contact information with our viewers? Oh, sure. It's um, Eileen Kane, William Ravis Real Estate. Eileen period Kane at ravis.com, R-A-V-E-I-S. Um, you can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on LinkedIn. My cell is 508-254-6865. So before we... Um move off, my biggest concern is and has been first-time home buyers, yeah. and uh, particularly the average sale price of $500,000, yeah. the um, difficulty of uh, coordinating and getting together a down payment. Mm -hmm. um, what is your advice to first-time home buyers? Where's mom and dad? Yeah. <laughs> seeing a lot of deposit money being funded by family, whether it's aunts, uncles. I mean, that is the truth, John. I am like, in order to be a strong buyer, can you come up? You know, years ago was the benefit of the Veterans um, mm -hmm. Loan Program of the first time, buy, you know, 3%. But with the prices so high, people, you know, the listing agents and sellers are worried about appraisals. So they're looking for heavier deposits. But, you know, it can be done. So just... It, You'll be where you're supposed to be, but it's not going to be easy. If you can't come up with the 20%, you're 
and nor really should you have to as far as your mortgage payment goes, right? Because at 3% interest, if you're putting down 3%, it's still so affordable, mm -hmm. even at a $500,000 note, right? So even though the sale prices are up, but the interest rates are low, your mortgage payment is lower, even with the increase. Mm -hmm. So people always say, well, what if I'm selling in three years? Well, what you buy will be low too. You know, so just love where you live. So any last minute um, suggestions to people out there watching you? Be represented. Don't go it alone. Whether if you're a buyer, have a buyer agent representative. If you're a seller, have a seller representative. There's a lot of for sale buy owners out there right now. They think they can do it still. I bring my buyers to the property and they get the better deal from the for sale by owners because there's no competition. So representation with lawyers, list, you know, agents, inspectors, lenders, don't go it alone. And the importance of a realtor with the training and all of that, do you want to just explain the importance of that to people in the yeah, I happen future to be, audience? I happen to be a seasoned agent. I'll call myself seasoned at 17 years, but I wasn't always. But you know, when I started, I had great mentorship. Um, but yes, you want to go with somebody who is, is experienced and will really work hard for you and, mm -hmm. and help you to make a logical decision. It's very emotional. And I've pumped the brakes on with some of my buyer purchasing because I thought, it's just not okay. I know you're desperate to be in a, a building. This is not a good decision for you. And you'll thank me for it later. In realtors, I always like to talk about the training that that you actually have to get CEUs every certain time yeah. period. Yeah, continuing education. Yeah. yeah, which is which is fantastic because you know real estate's evolving, so it's it's good that they require that. But really, the the education's in the field. Right. So one more time, your contact information. Sure, Eileen Kane, William Ravis Real Estate, 508-254-6865. You could find me on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. I'm recording live now as we speak. Hello, everyone, again. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County. I want to thank Eileen Kane of the Kane Group, William Ravis Real Estate, for the great job she did in talking about the real estate market, current conditions, the difficulty of buyers, and the challenges for sellers. Um, she's been a guest before and once again did a great job. Um, in this segment of the show, segment three, we always try to talk about something lighter in nature. Uh, first of all, our holidays for the month, Cinco de Mayo on the 5th, National Nurses Day on the 6th, Mother's Day on the 9th, National Chocolate Chip Day on the 15th, Armed Forces Day on the 15th, Joshua James Day, a local Plymouth County holiday on the 16th and Memorial Day. Um, in our notable records that we talk about, relate to those holidays. So let's go right to our notable records. Uh, the first one you're gonna see is Island Grove Park in Abington. It was the site of pre-Civil War abolitionist meetings, but it is also a site for Memorial Bridge. Back in the days when people came down to speak in Island Grove Pond about um, the Civil War slavery, slavery issue pre-Civil War, they would come down by train, uh, picnic in the park, and listen to people like uh, William, Gar William Lloyd Garrison and others. Um, however, they later built, in, as part of the Abington's bicentennial celebration, a bridge um, in an archway in honor of the service and sacrifices of Civil War soldiers and sailors from Abington, particularly those that didn't make it through the war. The bridge created an entrance from west of Island Grove Pond, and it has a, a sailor and a, a soldier on the, on the archway with a uh, top uh, of it of a very gold eagle. Uh, it's a beautiful place to visit. Uh, it used to be an amusement park when it first opened up, but people still use Island Grove Park for many types of recreation, skating, swimming, summer vacation programs, uh, concerts. It's a great, quiet place to walk. 
So the next one is also related to a holiday. A gentleman by the name of Captain Joshua James, he lived in Hull. He was America's most famous lifesaver. Um, he, he was a native of Hull. His mother and sister drowned in a schooner accident when he was a child. So he joined the Mass Humane Society as a lifesaver at 15 years of age. He's credited with saving hundreds of lives from damaged ships. Uh, there were a lot of shoals off the coast of Massachusetts, and the, and the ships would crash on those coasts, and you'd have to go out and rescue them. Um, so there was a Lifehouse Museum down there in Hull, Hull Life Saving Museum. That's a great place to visit. Um, James Former Point Allerton Life Station how is now the Life Saving Museum. And the building is on the National Register of Historical Places. Because of Joshua James' achievements, uh, he, he continues to be honored today. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts has the third Sunday in May as Joshua James Day. His home and health is marked by a plaque in his honor. And the United States Coast Guard grants a medal in his name annually to guardsmen with long and dedicated service. The next notable record you're going to see is also related to the holidays I mentioned, the chocolate chip holiday. Ruth Graves Wakefield from the Toll House in Whitman invented the Toll House cookie. Um, it, the building was built in 1709 for road-weary travelers. However, in 1933, Ruth ran out of Baker's chocolate, and she decided to make a cookie with chopped Nestle semi-sweet chocolate bars. Uh, people really liked it so much that it became a regular staple on the menu. Uh, when she died, uh, the toll house burnt down. But prior to that, Nestle's cookie had bought that recipe from Ruth Waves Graves Wakefield, and anyone that buys a Nestle um, morsel, Nestle semi-sweet chocolate morsel, on the back of that package is her original recipe. And the chocolate chip cookie is the official designated cookie of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And last but not least, one of our colonial records, uh, we're still celebrating the, the 2020, the 400th anniversary of the arrival of the colonists. A lot of the programs were kicked over to 2021 because of the COVID issue. Um, this particular one you'll see is celebration of trade with the Wampanoag. Uh, kindness of the native people saved the lives of the, of the new colonists when they arrived in Plymouth. Uh, and certainly uh, the trade of beaver, corn, and beads uh, with the natives. Um, and the fact that they had already had well-established trading routes to the north and south uh, helped them establish their own markets. And again, without the trade with the Wampanoag Nation, the colonists never would have survived as a colony. So let me thank Lorna Green Baker and Christine Richards from our office for helping me put this show together. I want to thank Brockton Cable Access. This is my 127th show. We do one a month based on our numbers. In particular today, Mike Parsons and Emma Redden organized this show and taped this show. And we had a very special guest recorder today, Daniel Kane, the son of my guest, Eileen Kane, did a great job also taping the show that I'm sure he'll share with her customers and his friends. So thank you, everyone. Have a great Memorial Day and enjoy the beginning of the summer. Thank you. Mm -hmm.